Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're taking a look at the refreshed for 2014 Scion TC two-door coupe. Now this is Scion's other two-door coupe in their lineup. It's been there for a while, but it's also been overshadowed by that rear-wheel drive Scion FRS, which is of course the same thing as the Subaru BRZ with a Scion logo on it. That's their rear-wheel drive two-door coupe. It's been stealing the limelight, but let's check out this original two-door coupe and see if the 2014 refresh makes it something to look at. I mentioned the FRS because in many ways that Scion is the direct competitor to this Scion because they're both sitting there on that same lot and the TC is about $5,000 cheaper. So if you come into the Scion dealer really wanting an FRS, you can't quite afford one, you're probably going to take a long look at this TC just because it's there on that same lot. There also are not very many inexpensive two-door coupes out on the market anymore. We have the Honda Civic, of course we have an SI version of that Civic right now. There aren't too many others out there in this prime mass market two-door coupe market, however, especially not at the low starting prices of the Scion TC. And let's cover those prices right up front. Only two prices that you need to know, $19,965 for the manual transmission version, $2,965 for the automatic version. The way that Scion prices these cars, that is a essentially fixed price. I mean, it's, it's really truly not, even though they claim it's a pure price. You can get some discounts under that, but most Scion dealers will stick right to that true price pricing scheme. Now, there are a few other options, but they're all essentially aftermarket options. So you can get a navigation package for this car, you can get a few other things, uh, you know, better door lock uh, knobs, you know, uh, an alarm system, things like that, uh, floor mats, trunk mats, that sort of thing. But those are all aftermarket-like accessories. So none of them will come on the lot like that without the dealer configuring them that way. So they all come off the truck, right like this one here, with no options, everything is standard on the Scion TC, so it's a lot easier to deal with than some of the competition. The 2014 refresh brings some new wheels, which we're going to take a look at in a bit, but nothing else on the side view of the Scion TC has changed for 2014. We still have a fairly high belt line, and we still have this kink in the bodywork back here that makes rearward visibility just a little bit tricky in the TC. Out back we get a redesigned rear bumper, again with those Scion FRS styling details. This is not a lamp in the US version of the Scion TC. Other markets do get a fog lamp back there, but in America it's just blank, it's just a reflector. Back here we have some slightly redesigned tail lamps. These are basically the same as last year, only they're clear now with uh, red indicators inside the clear plastic. Under the hood you'll find a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. It produces 179 horsepower and 172 pound-feet of torque. Those are decent numbers for a car this size, and it's also worth noting that that torque number is fairly high for an engine like this and a car like this. It's approximately equal to that horsepower number, which is an ideal state of affairs. If we compare that to that Scion FRS, it produces 200 horsepower from a 2-liter four-cylinder engine, but it only produces 151 pound-feet of torque. New for 2014 is a six-speed automatic transmission that is optional, and that bumps your fuel economy for 2014 up to 23 miles per gallon city, 31 highway with a combined 26 mile per gallon rating. If we opt for this six speed manual transmission, which is a carryover from last year, we get roughly the same fuel economy numbers with a slight reduction in the city. We've been averaging about 29 miles per gallon in mixed driving with this manual transmission model that we're testing here, which is a fairly good number, and that's primarily thanks to the low curb weight of the Scion TC. This ranges from about 3,082 pounds to just over 3,100 pounds, depending on your transmission. Front seat comfort in the TC is something of a mixed bag, and it really depends on what you expect out of your car. Because there are no options in the Scion TC, there's no power seat option to increase the range of motion of the driver's seat. So you're left with a single-way height adjustable lever right there, a single forward-backward adjustment right there, and a seat recline. There's no lumbar support adjustable in the seat at all. There's really not a whole lot of lumbar support going on in the Scion TC period. Of course, if you're the younger buyer that Scion is targeting, maybe you don't have back problems, but I'm only 30 and my back is hurting me. So here we have a tilt telescoping steering column with a decent range of motion. It makes finding a driving position a lot easier, but I still have to do the Scion owner manual for the lumbar support trick whenever I'm in the TC. Admittedly, rear seat comfort isn't the biggest factor in most two-door shoppers' minds. However, the TC has a decent amount of space back here in the rear seat. It's notably more comfortable than the Scion FRS, and that's because we get a decent amount more legroom thanks to the overall size of the Scion TC. We also have a little bit more headroom back here, and because all TCs come one way, they all come with a sunroof, so that's a large sunroof up front, and a small glass panel back here for the rear passengers as well. Rear headroom is a little bit limited back here, and it's shaped a little bit interesting. So if I'm sitting back here, my head is directly above the glass. My hair is not touching anything if I'm sitting all the way back in my seat, but you don't get a whole lot of view 
out of these very small rear windows. If I scoot over to the left side of the car, you can see that I have a decent amount of legroom left. I have about two inches of legroom left, and this front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall in a somewhat reclined driving position. So you can easily fit four six foot tall adults in the Scion TC and go for lunch. These rear passengers aren't gonna be all that happy with you, but you can do it. Now, there's also a fifth seat in the Scion TC, which is an interesting twist, but you have to be very small and very skinny to fit back here in this middle seat. The seats in the TC all come one way. They're all these fabric seats, nearly identical for the driver and the front passenger. The front passenger is just not height adjustable. We have hard plastic door panels, hard plastic dash panels as well. Here we have a fairly large glove box. You can see it has a decent amount of storage room there. Up here in the ceiling, you'll find, again, that two panel sunroof. One panel up here for the front passengers, one panel up there for the rear passengers. The dashboard plastics remind me an awful lot of the Toyota Prius. It has a very similar texture going on there, and it is hard plastic. Two large air vents there. Going down, all Scion TC models come standard with this touchscreen LCD infotainment system. This is a Pioneer unit, so if you're familiar with Toyota nav systems or infotainment systems, then forget everything you know. Scion is nothing like that. And this is standard, but navigation is not standard, so if you hit that map button, you get a little message there saying that Bespoke Premium Audio is not installed. That is a $1,200 option and includes app integration as well as that mapping software. Single zone manual climate control. Down here we'll find our USB and auxiliary input. The system did work fairly well with our iOS devices and it has enough power to charge high draw devices. Back here we have a single power port. And again, ours is the manual transmission model, so we have the six speed stick right there. Two large cup holders right here in the center console next to the hand parking brake easily accommodate these large takeout style cups. Center armrest is fairly decently sized. It's not terribly deep, but it is a decent size for a car like this. The armrest does not adjust forward and backward or for height. The TC gets a three dial instrument cluster that is orange backlit day and night. And if we zoom out, we have the new Scion steering wheel with a flat bottom, perforated sides, and standard leather top. We get our audio buttons right here on the steering wheel, and our cruise control is on a little stock, just like you'd find in most Toyota models. This is a great steering wheel to hold. It has a very nice feel to them, very well positioned, and very good feeling sport grips as well. All TCs have standard power mirrors, standard power door locks, as well as standard power windows. The driver's window gets an auto down feature. One thing that I need to point out that was slightly disappointing is some of the build quality in the Scion TC, or perhaps it's design quality. But if you take a look at this, you can see that when you press on this door armrest here, that this gap enlarges quite a bit. And I find myself needing to push up off door armrests a decent amount in the Scion TC just because of the way the seat is shaped. I feel myself slipping down an awful lot. So you have to sort of use your elbow to lift yourself up in your seat and rearrange yourself. And as you can see, there's a decent amount of motion there in that armrest and it increases that panel gap, something that's not very attractive. The TC continues to score eight out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index because the cargo area is larger than you might think. This is of course a hatchback, which makes the cargo area a bit more efficient than a sedan, but it's also obviously been designed around these large roller bags. This is the largest roller bag you can carry in a domestic flight. You can fit four of them back here fairly easily, and you can see that the cargo area was really designed with these bags specifically in mind. We also have a donut spare tire right here under the cargo hatch and a handle that makes closing the lid a lot easier whether you're inside or outside the trunk. Let's take the briefest of looks at infotainment. If you don't care about it, then just skip on ahead to the drive section review by following those instructions at the bottom of your screen and we'll pick back up with you there. All Scion TCs have this double DIN touchscreen head unit for 2014. This is a change from 2013 where there was a, a non-touchscreen head unit available as well. Scion is all about customization and easy replacement of audio systems. That's why this is still following a standard doubled in format. And you'll notice that the plastics don't really match anything else in the car. It's because it is a Pioneer stereo. This is made especially for Scion, uh, but it's not related directly to any of the other Toyota or Scion uh, radio systems that you've seen in the past. So uh, the Scion IQ, for instance, its touchscreen radio unit with the nav system is more closely related to the Toyota nav units that you'd expect in something like a Toyota Camry or uh, something along those lines. This is a entirely different unit. It means it's also easier to replace this because it uses industry standard uh, sizing. It's not, uh, it's not an off size like you'd find in certain other vehicles. Uh, and the connectors in the back are standard Pioneer connectors, we are told. This unit offers 
FM, AM, HD radio, as you can see by that little logo right there, and right now we're listening to HD radio there. It also has a fully featured iPod and Bluetooth interface. The interface for changing your devices is quite unique compared to other Toyota products. You scroll through your screens this way, and now we're on our iPod. You can hit your songs button, and this will show you what's in your current playlist. Browse up here to browse your media device. You can browse by playlists, artists, albums, genres, etc. Very easy to navigate around in. It's also very snappy and very responsive. Uh, back over on the source button, we have a fully featured Bluetooth interface as well. Um, you do have certain access to tracks on your Bluetooth device, which is a unique feature uh, with this touchscreen unit. You don't really find that very often um, in many touchscreen head units, the ability to select tracks via the Bluetooth interface. Um, there is also a limited ability to browse. It's not quite the same as you'd find in that connector, but it's fairly close. That operates well with every Bluetooth device that we've tested it with. Uh, we've tested it with uh, USB sticks as well as uh, Apple iOS devices. Over here on the setup screen, you'll find your usual Bluetooth phone, audio system, etc. Mapping is an optional uh, extra on this system. It's just a software option that's added to this same head unit, so nothing really here changes. We get the map button whether we have navigation or not. That is a $1,200 option, which is fairly pricey, but it does bring certain smartphone uh, app integration into this radio. We haven't really seen exactly what that looks like because there hasn't been one with the bespoke audio and mapping system uh, together for us to test, so you'll have to get back with us when we can get our hands on one and see what that looks like. Over here on the audio button, takes you right back to the audio source that you're currently playing. The uh, voice command button right up here is specifically for the phone interface, which is also accessible via that little phone icon right there. Connect phone is fairly self-explanatory, speed dials, call history, and of course we have contacts over there. The Scion TC is an awful lot of fun to drive out on the road, and it's kind of a Goldilocks car. It, it lands right in the middle of a lot of the competition. So it, in terms of performance, body roll, um, overall handling ability, etc. It lands right between the Honda Civic Si and the regular Honda Civic Coupe. Uh, I would place this between the Scion FRS on the top end and the Hyundai Elantra Coupe on the low end. It's definitely more engaging to drive than the current Kia Forte Coupe, although there is a new one coming out very soon. In terms of hard numbers, we ran from 0 to 60 in 7.4 to 7.6 seconds in the TC, depending on how we drove the manual transmission. Again, that lands this right in the middle, with the FRS and the Civic SI being faster, and the regular Civic and the Hyundai Elantra being slower. Now, most buyers will be buying this car with the automatic transmission, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of the automatic transmission numbers, they are fairly close to these manual transmission numbers, thanks to that brand new six-speed automatic with throttle matching downshifts. Out on these winding mountain roads, science tweaks for 2014 are definitely noticeable. The TC is more engaging to drive than it was last year. They've tweaked the electric power steering. Of course, it still has electric power steering, so it's not going to be as engaging as a hydraulic power steering unit, but everybody's going to these electric units, so it really doesn't matter that much. Now, this is still a front-wheel drive car, and a 2.5-liter engine under the hood uh, means that there is still a decent amount of weight up there versus something like a Scion FRS. However, one thing you need to keep in mind is that this car has those fairly wide 225 width tires versus the 215s in the Scion FRS. The Scion FRS uses low rolling resistance rubber and the TC does not. So when it comes to absolute numbers on the skid pad, for instance, the TC scores only slightly behind the FRS. It's about uh, 0.86 Gs instead of 0.88 Gs in the Scion FRS. And that's something really incredible to keep in mind because the FRS is a rear wheel drive car. So that just tells you how good this TC is out on the road. The Civic SI is more dynamic out on the road without question. The suspension is a little bit stiffer. It's a little bit more direct. The steering is a little bit more direct. The shifter feel is superior to the Scion TC and it has a limited slip differential, which really helps you engage all those 200 horses in a front wheel drive car. The six-speed manual shifter in the TC is not rubbery, but it's not as engaging as the Honda Civic SI or the Scion FRS either. The TC's 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine is very torquey, and that's obvious out on these winding mountain roads, where you don't have to downshift as frequently as you would in something like the Scion FRS. The FRS has about 20-something pound-feet less torque than the TC, and that's very obvious out on these winding roads, where you constantly have to downshift the FRS more than you do the TC. 
I find myself in the FRS constantly wishing it had more power. It's undeniably more fun, more dynamic, and, and better in most every metric than the Scion TC, just because of its rear-wheel drive nature, uh, the way that Toyota has tuned it and designed it, and of course the fact that the engine produces more horsepower. But in terms of real-world drivability, the TC is a lot easier to drive, and a lot easier to live with too. That's the prime difference between the TC and the FRS is that the FRS is very much a track car. Everything was tuned to be perfect and feel good out on the track. That's part of why those low rolling resistance tires are in the FRS as well, because if you have those low rolling resistance tires, even with 200 horsepower under the hood, you can get a decent amount of rear tail action uh, out on the road. And that's something that uh, you can't get in the Scion TC. The, the TC will never get tail happy on you. Uh, the tail will never feel light like you would get in a Scion FRS. You're never gonna get any rear end rotation out on the track. And that is definitely something you get an awful lot of in the Scion FRS. The TC scored high marks in our fuel economy tests, averaging 29.2 miles per gallon over approximately 600 miles of driving it like we stole it. Those numbers are especially surprising when you consider how low the gearing is in the TC. In sixth gear at 70 miles an hour, the engine's spinning nearly 3,000 RPM, so a seventh gear or a taller sixth gear would probably improve fuel economy. That's likely why the automatic receives approximately similar numbers in terms of fuel economy to this manual transmission version because its gearing is just a little bit higher. It doesn't really provide too much of a drivability difference out on the road. The six-speed automatic is a fairly competent transmission and the rev match downshifts make it an awful lot more engaging than the five-speed that you'll find in the Honda Civic Si. That is kind of the unusual twist with the Scion TC in that the Civic Si is the better performing vehicle uh, if you buy them with a manual transmission, but if you buy them with an automatic, like most shoppers will, then I almost think that the TC is the better buy and the better choice. It has a better transmission, and that's something that most people will care about out on the road because that's something that they interact with every time they drive the car. And the Honda 5-speed automatic shifts are just a little bit lazy, just a little bit slow, and of course it's only a 5-speed versus a 6-speed transmission. If you opt for the manual transmission, then there's no question the Civic Si is going to be the more engaging car to drive. And an important thing to keep in mind is that uh, even in that five-speed automatic transmission with the Civic Si, you still get the limited slip front differential, which helps you apply that power more easily than the Scion TC. The TC ends up being my Goldilocks of two-door economy coupes for a very important reason. It successfully rides the line uh, right down the middle in terms of handling, performance, uh, feature content, etc., between the TC and its competition, but it also does so at a very good price. Just under $20,000 for the manual transmission, just over $20,000 for the automatic transmission, with no options and no upgrades available to be uh, you know, swindled out of at the dealership, the TC is a very good price for what you get. It's cheaper than that Civic Si, better performing than the regular Civic, and it's a $5,000 discount over that Scion FRS. I really like the way the Scion FRS performs and the way that it handles and feels on the road, and I could probably afford one, but if I was at the dealer lot, I might be tempted to go for the Scion TC just because it's a good value, and I'm kind of a cheap bastard. After a week in the Scion TC, it surprised me more than I thought it would. Scion's two-coupe strategy is already a little bit interesting, having both a rear-wheel drive and a front-wheel drive coupe in their lineup, but the TC's pricing, it's about $5,000 cheaper than that Scion FRS, and it handles almost as well, even though it's a front-wheel drive car. Obviously, the dynamics are very different from that Scion FRS, but in stock form, out on the track, you pull almost as many Gs on the skid pad in this front-wheel drive Scion TC as you do in the rear-wheel drive Scion FRS. That has to do with a number of different choices that Scion made, including smaller tires in the FRS, low rolling resistance tires in the FRS, and uh, wider tires and grippier rubber over here in the Scion TC. Now the balance is admittedly all wrong in the Scion TC for sports car driving. I mean, it has a front wheel drive uh, layout. It's front heavy compared to that Scion FRS, and the FRS is very well balanced. Not something that's happening on here in the TC. But even so, the TC does very well for itself out on the track. It's quite a joy to drive. And I would call it a decent value as well because that FRS is 25% more expensive than the TC, but I don't think it's 25% more fun. Compared to the other players in the segment, the TC holds its own very well. Compared to the Civic Si, I think the Civic handles just a little bit better, but I prefer the way the TC looks, and I also prefer the way the TC is priced versus that Honda Civic Si Coupe. Versus the Honda Elantra and, of course, that Kia Forte Coupe, which is coming up and we haven't seen it yet, um, the Elantra 
doesn't handle as well, obviously. It, it, it feels like a wet noodle out on the road, especially in comparison with the Scion TC. Uh, even compared to the Kia Forte out there, that Hyundai Elantra Coupe just doesn't have the same road feel. I expect good things out of the Kia Forte Coupe after having driven the 2013 Kia Forte sedan, but I don't expect it to quite equal this Scion TC. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and that's been our quick look at the 2014 Scion TC. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be kept up to date on all of our latest videos. You can send me a message right here on YouTube and ask us any questions you'd like. Go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. Tell us what you liked and what you didn't like about this video, and we'll see you next week.